Let's wait for it to say that we are live. We could be going live any moment now. So I'm just going to keep talking for a second. Oh, I see it. Live. We are now live. Hello, moving to Canada audience. Welcome to our latest live video. Uh, I am Dane, one of the content developers here at Moving to Canada. And could you please introduce yourself for me? I am Hugo, Dane's colleague here on the editorial side. So yeah, great to Great to get some news. Not out today. merely my colleague Hugo, you are in fact the editor of Moving to Canada. That is true. Sure. Uh, so we are here today. We're going to talk about the latest uh, Canadian travel restrictions. Canada imposed uh, some pretty extensive international travel restrictions back in March in response to COVID-19. Uh, there were some updates that came out today. So we just wanted to hop in and review those updates for you guys. Make sure you're being kept up to date here. Uh, we are just going to give it a minute for some folks to join. Uh, so if you are hopping into the live stream now, uh, just be patient with us. We're just gonna we're just gonna catch up. I haven't talked to Hugo in a while. It's been a solid what hour since our last meeting. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but we will once we have some people in the live stream, we will jump into the news and updates. So, Hugo, you where are you located? I'm in Montreal where you used where to be used located to be before I ran away to the Atlantic <laughs> bubble. Uh, and yeah. stuff is not looking great in in Montreal this week from what I'm seeing. Is that right? Yeah, uh, there's certainly a more restrictive uh, rules in place starting this week Uh basically going through the month of October. So hopefully that has the effect of uh, keeping the numbers in check in terms of uh, COVID um, and that we can all work towards a better 2021. How's that? I think that's a very diplomatic way of <laughs> phrasing it. Um, but I mean, yeah. it's important, I think, for people to be aware of sort of the changing situation in Canada because the landscape of COVID mm. infections is one of the driving factors that will I impact uh, these immigration policies and decisions. Um, yeah. And uh, I think we can safely say Canada is very much in its, its second wave right now. Uh, it's just very geographically... Um, indistinct or <laughs> yeah I think it's really important especially with these large countries and Canada definitely fits that category um, that you know they're not monoliths uh, that different things happen at different rates in different places and that Halifax where you are is certainly having a better time of it than Montreal for example um, so when we look at you know anything in, across Canada it's better to zoom in at a local mm -hmm. level um before passing you know a nationwide yeah and i uh, for people who aren't familiar with uh with canada or how they've been addressing uh covid here i'm in uh, halifax which is in the province of nova scotia one of the four atlantic provinces nova scotia new brunswick pei prince edward island um and those four provinces shut down travel even interprovincially for a time and they've now sort of bubbled together but they still have very restrictive measures if you come from another province you have to isolate for two weeks and there's essentially no community spread out east where in the Atlantic bubble. So I think it's showing some policymakers that, you know, even though it's extremely restrictive, these sort of uh, in travel restrictions and uh, those sorts of impositions can actually be effective in, in slowing or stemming the spread. Um, but I think we've talked enough about that. Uh, do you want to, let's jump into the, uh, yeah. the news. Speaking of today. travel restrictions, Dane, why don't you give us the latest on international <laughs> rather than national travel restrictions? Perfect. Uh, so to do this, I'm going to pull up uh, the COVID-19 news feed on the Moving to Canada website. This is something that uh, Hugo and I have been managing uh, from the start of the pandemic. And uh, we update it a couple times a week, sometimes a couple times a day, uh, whenever updates come out. So Canada changes travel restrictions or introduces new special measures uh, and immigration policies to address some of the uh, some of the challenges that the country is facing due to COVID. Uh, so I've just pulled up the most recent update. Uh, this is what came out today. And Hugo, can you uh, just give us a, a high-level summary of what, uh, what the news is that came out today? Yeah, the news is basically it's as you were. It's, there's no real uh, changes. I know that some people were hopeful that there would be some greater leeway given to people in committed relationships uh, where 
you know, one half of the couples in Canada and the other person is is outside the country. But Dane, as far as I'm aware, there's there's no real change on that front, at least uh, for the month of October. No, there hasn't been yet. But as you said, there were a couple of sources uh, reporting earlier this week that they might be introducing um, some leeway for uh, couples who aren't, you know, technically married. Um, it's still possible that that could come. I mean, the sources that were reporting were pretty reliable media publications. Uh, we're just a bit hesitant uh, at this point to uh, report on something in, until we can confirm it or until we've confirmed it from multiple independent sources um so i mean keep your eyes on our feed that it's possible that update could come in the next couple of days um but as hugo mentioned and as uh, i've got pulled up here on our website uh we had the international travel ban extended until at least october 31st um notably that impacts all countries except the united states um as you'll see here on this uh web page the canada u.s border it's a it's completely separate travel ban though the restrictions are much the same it's just with the u.s uh that's been extended until at least October 21st, though a number of sources uh, have indicated that there's a there's a good likelihood that will continue to be extended uh, up until around Thanksgiving at the at the earliest. Um, but both of these things, they're both negotiated uh, and renegotiated on a monthly basis. So, uh, I mean, always check our feed a couple days a week before they're set to expire uh, and you'll be able to find out if they've if they've changed those restrictions. Yeah, they maybe just give a, uh, a very high level because we're saying, you know, no, no real changes. But if you could just give two or three of the most important things that people need to know that have been in place from March right up till today and until at least October 31st. Right. So like, a few of the important, I would say the, the most important things to be aware of are uh, A, the uh, exemptions to the travel restrictions. So not everybody is banned from entering Canada. Uh, I'm against just scrolling through our COVID news feed here, uh, just a bit further down the page for who and who who can and cannot enter Canada at this time. And you'll see we've got a pretty comprehensive list here. Uh, I'll just go over it quickly, uh, the main points. But you'll see Canadian citizens, Canadian permanent residents, of course, are still allowed to enter the country, as well as their immediate family members. Um, and immediate family members, there's a very specific definition for that. Uh, if I just scroll a little bit further down the page, you'll be able to see uh, who qualifies as an immediate family member. Uh, let me just pull that up for you guys. Uh, and again, if you want to check this out, it's linked at the top of every page on our website. So you can read through all the details yourself. But immediate family members uh, include spouses and common law partners, dependent children, dependent children of dependent children, uh, parents, step parents, uh, as well as guardians or tutors. There's a very strict definition as to what qualifies or constitutes a guardian or tutor. So check that. And uh, as uh, Hugo brought up, they might be. Uh, there's a possibility they might be expanding that definition for who qualifies as a couple. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see, you know, if, if the government do something around, you know, if, if, if a couple is engaged, mm -hmm. for example, <laughs> and that that engagement, you know, exists in the context of a common law relationship, so the people can prove that they have had a long standing commitment to each other. I'd love to see them move in that direction before too long. Um, of course, taking into full account, you know, the, the health and safety of everyone uh, on across all borders. But um, I know that we were hearing a lot of families and couples who are eager for, for change like that um, to, to come about. So, well, and the thing is that they're not it's it's not like you if you qualify for an exemption, you just come to Canada and you're free to, right. you know, roam yeah. about as you would. The One of the other <laughs> important points I was going to bring up yeah. after the exemptions was the, the mandatory quarantine. Uh, so yeah. let's hold that thought for like 30 seconds. I'll go through the rest of the, the exemptions here and then uh, we'll talk about the quarantine. Um, so just some high level things here, temporary workers, people who uh, hold a, a valid work permit or were approved for a work permit uh, are still able to travel to Canada at this time. The mm. little exception there is IEC participants. So people going through international experience, Canada, including the working holiday program, uh, you have to either have already activated your work permit and have some demonstration that you've maintained ties to Canada, whether employment, you have an apartment you've been paying for, you have family here, 
or uh, if you're an IC participant who has your POE letter, you've been approved, uh, you can enter Canada, but you need to have a job offer. That's not usually how it works. It's just a COVID uh, measure. Um, as well, international students, uh, certain international students can still enter if you have a valid study permit that was approved prior to March 18th. Uh, if you were approved, you have your approval letter that's dated before March 18th, or if it was approved after March 18th and you're from the U.S., um, as you can see, it gets really sticky here. Uh, international students always also have to be uh, have to demonstrate they're traveling for a non-discretionary purpose. So you couldn't do your classes online. You need some sort of in-person uh, study in Canada. Uh, as you can see, they've done. I mean, the amount of policy that has been enacted in the last couple of months it's it's really staggering. It's it's quite impressive, uh, despite the fact that it's extremely restrictive. But I, I was just thinking today, Hugo, how, uh, how I do not envy the the policymakers who are sitting uh, at the helm of the these decisions that are being made. It's uh, of course, yeah. It's uh, they thought they were making plans for 2020 and 2021, and then, you know, I don't know who said it, but you know. Um, Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> you know, you, you, it's just you know that thing that comes from out of nowhere, and you're, you just have to like react. Um, and it's 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 kind of wild how these government departments have to you know sort of get new information and come up with new policies on the fly. And by and large, you know, I think we have to give credit to a lot of those departments for the way they've been able to react in Canada so far this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Um, on a on a fun note, uh, <laughs> speaking of getting punched in the face, which one of us do you think would win in a fight if we had to fight? Is the definitely you? I think I would too. But you're you're much taller than me. People can't tell because we're seated. But I'm a I'm a short little boy. Uh, okay, so if you guys have opinions on wh whether you think Hugo or I would win in a fight, please feel free to drop them in the in the comments here. Um, so the other thing I said I, I wanted to mention, which is quite important, is the mandatory quarantine. So no matter who you yeah. are, uh, no matter what your status, if you're a Canadian citizen or a temporary worker, anyone coming from outside the country, uh, once you enter Canada, you have to undergo a mandatory 14-day uh, quarantine period. You have to do it. If you don't, you're breaking the law. You can get fined. There have been some fines that have been issued. Uh, and also you endanger public health and safety, so just don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. And have you done a quarantine yet this year, Hugo? Have you done it? No, I haven't left the country. Okay, I did one when I came out east, and it was. Yeah. I haven't left the province. I haven't left Quebec. Come out east with me. It's nice here. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. It's it's a it's a mental experience if you're um, if you're isolating alone and you have no internet like I did. It was tough. Um, so those are the main. Uh, points that we wanted to cover. You'll see here, I've got pulled up here, uh, an isolation plan as a mandatory component. If you're, if you are uh, exempt from uh, the travel restrictions, you're entering Canada, you have to have a plan uh, to show to or to explain to the border officer when you enter Canada, which um, expands on exactly how you're going to quarantine. If you don't have that plan, you will likely be denied entry. Uh, so make sure that you prepare that um, if you guys are watching, we're going to wrap up in just a mm, couple of minutes here. If you've got questions that we haven't addressed, this is pretty, you know, surface level summary that we're going through today. Uh, but drop them in the comments. We might have time to answer a question or two here. Um, but I, I am just going to show off a little bit more of our COVID news feed here. You'll see we have a whole section on common questions. Um, it's just a whole list of common questions that gets into the, as I said yesterday, uh, as I said earlier, it's, it's really sticky. These things are really complex. Um, so questions like, I have a study permit. I'm temporarily outside of Canada. Can I still come back? I'm inside Canada. Can I travel to the border and flagpole and activate my status? All of these more specific questions, you may be able to find your uh, specific answer in this section of the COVID news feed. So definitely check that out. Uh, as I said, it's linked at the top of every page on the moving to canada website uh so hugo i know while we were prepping before we went live you'd mentioned there were a couple other things uh that you wanted to go over today is that right yeah i think first of all before we do that just have a very quick question for you yeah. i think we already know the answer but it's a very common one out there which is when will these travel restrictions end and when will canada be welcoming more people and let me just 
jump straight to the answer. We don't know. Isn't that right? <laughs> that is exactly right. We have uh, yeah. absolutely no idea. Uh, there's so many variables at play. COVID <laughs> is a big, yeah. COVID's probably the biggest one. Um, but uh, there's so much, uh, so much that we have to guess at here. And, and we've done our best through this to, to not engage in too much speculation to just bring you guys uh the uh you know well-sourced information that we have when we have it um so that's yeah we we just can't answer some questions unfortunately but what will be interesting in the coming weeks is uh if and when the government releases a new immigration levels plan as it's expected to do before november right so even though they might not be able to admit people in, in any significant numbers uh, between now and then uh, and potentially until 2021, um, we'll get an indication of what the government's plan is for the coming years. Isn't that right? Uh, we should, yes. So they normally uh, only release an immigration levels plan. What? It's it's not as common as as it's, as is happening right now. But it's, it's once a year, but the last year's one was released late because there was oh, an right. election. So typically it's in the fall, but fall. So um, yeah, the last one was actually right the week before they closed the borders back in March. But there's a new one unexpected now uh, at some point in October. I, I, I think that's going to be one of the most interesting immigration levels plans that we'll ever see um, because of everything going on that you just mentioned. Yeah, um, and it will be, uh, I mean, we've seen the past couple of years, we've had immigration levels plans that show a three-year plan to admit more than one million new permanent residents to Canada. That's a huge number, and that's just permanent residents. That doesn't include, you know, visitors, uh, international students, temporary workers, that sort of thing. It's just permanent uh, immigration. Um, so it'll be... It'll be interesting to see if they adhere to that commitment um, or if they reduce it as a means to sort of accommodate uh, the impacts of COVID. Um, there's an economic argument uh, for, for keeping the, the... Very strong economic argument. <laughs> yeah. Can you summarize that for us? Um, Canadians aren't happy and that the workforce as a proportion of the population is shrinking. And there are a lot of public social programs that uh, need a tax revenue base that is broad and reliable. Um, you know, Canada has a quality publicly funded, funded healthcare system. Um, it has uh, subsidized education up to the post-secondary level, etc. cetera. Um, there's uh, pension, the CPP, the QPP, where I am in Quebec. Um, and all of these require the country to have reliable revenues through through taxation and um, there aren't enough people entering the workforce and that's why in immigration they give loads and loads of points to people in their 20s and early 30s right so these people can be expected to be net tax contributors over the course of their life in Canada mm -hmm. um, so yeah there's a very strong economic economic argument um, to maintain high immigration levels Canada's uh, I think we just released a story this morning about it being one of the most, no, not one of the most, the most accepting place in the world for immigrants. And that's not just at a government level. That's a poll of Canadians themselves who want their neighbours to be newcomers, who are happy to welcome newcomers into their families and workplaces and communities. So uh, everything's aligned for Canada to continue um, welcoming people in large numbers. The only new, new variable would be we'll see see how it goes but i'm hopeful that they'll continue to maintain high immigration levels over the coming years yeah and i've just pulled up for our, our viewers out there the headline for this article we that hugo you you wrote and published this this morning canada number one for accepting migrants it says new global report uh you can check this out on the website you just go to immigration immigration news and it'll be that at the top of the list there it's the latest uh, article that we published um so uh, I think we're going to wrap up here. We're pushing up on 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> I know time <laughs> flies, Hugo, when it's just you and me hanging out, chilling, <laughs> teaching people about immigration. So much fun, man. The best. It's, it's the best part of my day. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, it's also the best part of my day. 
Um, <laughs> so <laughs> just before we end off, I am uh, going to take a sec to plug the Moving to Canada account. Uh, I've got our account registration page uh, open here. Uh, so you can see that uh, it's also usually linked at the top right hand of any. You'll see if I go back to the migration page, register for more. You can click this little register for more button. Um, it takes, you know, two minutes to register for an account and you get access to a ton of freebies, as you'll see here. Our getting started guide, resume templates, immigration roadmaps, all this cool stuff. Totally free definitely worth two minutes of your time to sign up so if you are watching and you haven't signed up make sure you do that otherwise i think we pretty much covered all we have to cover today uh thank you guys so much for joining us thank you hugo always a pleasure um always. is is your dog no i i want it no i want everyone to see your dog but i guess maybe not this video we'll do it another time <laughs> Um, Next and if you're an express entry candidate, stay tuned. There might be a draw tomorrow if patterns uh, are consistent. So we will, of course, go live with those results if and when it happens. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you next time. Ciao.